Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you who are first-time listeners or watchers to The Pleasure Zone, because yes, you can do both. You can voyeuristically watch in. For those of you who are brand new and you're wondering, what did I just tune into? You have tuned into the pleasure zone where we talk all about bodies, sex. We should look at things from historical perspectives to psychological, um, all kinds of different perspectives, spiritual perspectives on sex and intimacy and different things like kinks. And tonight our show is all about kink a kink but also a little history and mystery around panties we are going to talk about the practical some of the historical practical things and then we're also going to talk about some of the the kinky things so have you ever wondered where modern panties actually came from i i don't think i did wonder that until like maybe i started to look at this show no actually that's not true i have wondered what kind of underwear like my say my grandparents wore, I wondered that sort of thing, like, because I would ask my grandparents, my my grandmother, my great grandmother, I remember asking her what she had for underwear. She was born in 1896 and she died in 2002. And yes, those numbers are correct. She was 106 when she died. And when I was in, when I was a kid um, and she was probably in her nineties at the time, I did my very first interview was with my grandmother. Uh, great grandmother and uh, it was recorded on a cassette and I don't know if it still exists out there in the world somewhere in some stuff I have you know stored away but on that um, were so many great stories and I do believe I asked her about what she wore for clothes and what she went swimming in uh, and they didn't have bathing suits so she went swimming in her wool dress at the time you know in the early 1900s as a kid she would have swam in a sort of a wool suit but also she had uh, her family had a creek that ran through their property so she also swam sometimes in what would have been her underclothes so they would have worn like a long dress undergarment that would have also been sort of um, something you would sleep in and the the whole mystery around underwear is did they wear them not in the sense that we know them <laughs> so the underwear that we know is very modern. It didn't come around until the 1930s. Prior to that, there were variations on underwear that were more like petticoats and things. But we're going to talk about all of that history on this show. So if you are interested in all things to do with underpants, uh, panties, but we're also going to talk about underwear in general, the history of that. If you're curious about, you know, what are the stats? Are people into wearing panties or no panties why do people go to commando why do they wear underwear um what you know are g-strings sexy more sexy than white cotton panties we're going to find all that out we're also going to find out the history of the g-string why it has that name and uh, also we're going to find out a little bit about the kink of panties so in the very last segment if you are watching this and you're not interested in the kink of panties we are going to leave that to the end if you're only interested in the kink of panties, just if you are listening, you can fast forward to uh, about the third segment of the show, just so you know where you can go so you can hear what you'd like to hear. If you're into all of it, you sit back, relax, and enjoy. We are going to be talking all about things on the kink section that are going to have to do with the main kinks around panties. There are six main kinks around panties, and we will talk about them. It is such a common, common kink that it's often not discussed. And it's one of the safest kinks uh, out there as well, in terms of uh, safety hazards. Um, the only one that you, I suppose could be dangerous is if you're um, shoving panties down somebody's throat, that could be causing a choking hazard. But again, we're gonna leave that to the end of the show. <laughs> so 
I am Bailey Tsiyalonich, and what I do is I love to work with people with their bodies to allow them to have more pleasure. I often work with people who have gone through different traumas, allowing them and showing them ways to go out of trauma and into pleasure. I work with them through coaching as well as through uh, different things that I do, uh, body work that I do in person called the mitzvah technique, as well as something called radionics that uses frequencies that I send to bodies to allow them to have change, dynamic change, in fact. So those are some of the things I offer in my practice in my daily life. And I also offer that if you are curious and would like to know, uh, you know, whether I can work with you on any of the things that I talk about on this show, if you've had any curiosities, if you've listened to lots of other episodes and think, wow, I'd really like to just have a chat, you can go over to my website, go to melitzayelenich.com, so M-I-L-I-C-A-J-E-L-E-N-I-C.com, and if you scroll down to the bottom, you can click on the book now, and you can book a 15-minute session for free with me. All other times that you would pick on there, the 30, 60, or 90 minutes are all sessions that need to be paid for, so 15 minutes is free for the first time. All right, so we are going to dive into this very, very fun topic, and this very fun topic all about panties. I don't actually think I've done an entire show on this, so I'm going to have some fun because I know that I've been on somebody else's show where I talked about bras, and I know that I've done some other shows where I've talked about uh, sex toys, but somehow I don't, and maybe lingerie has been involved in some of them, but never specifically have I talked about panties, which blows my mind that after 400 episodes, I have not talked specifically about um, panties. So that's cool. I originally thought for those of you who are viewing it, that I would bring out some of my own. It just so happens most of them are either um, needing to be folded and they're probably in a pile of clean laundry or some are in a pile of dirty laundry. So for those of you who are into the dirty laundry, just have that in your imagination and enjoy. So panties, where did they come from? How did they start? Why do we have them? We are going to talk about that. Let's start with the, the first known, um, the first known history recorded of, of underwear, because it won't be panties in the sense of that. Um, so we're going to talk about more about how, where they came across, why do they exist? And I think for a lot of people, you might not even have thought about it. You just, it's the thing you wake up, you put them on or not, maybe you're a commando all the time, but it's just something that you either do or don't wear every day. And that's it. So what was the original purpose of underwear? Let's just think about it in a very, very logical way. What does underwear do? Well, underwear covers some, some pretty sensitive areas of the body, right? Underwear covers our genitals. And I'm just thinking like back, you know, we're talking back during the time of cave people. If, if you were naked and, you know, you might've had spiders crawling around or different things. Like if you're sitting directly on the dirt um, and you've got some things like, you know, crawling around your body, but you probably as cave people a little bit more hairy too. I would think that you would want to do something in order to cover your genitals. So like sand and rocks don't get in there because if you're sitting on the dirt, you could have that you know, you could find that there's probably infections happening from sitting on the sand and dirt or having bugs crawl inside. I don't know. I'm just vast imagination. So what do we see in pictures of cavemen? Um, not that there's going to be necessarily a lot of evidence left over for these things, although there's probably evidence of loincloths that have been found with bodies like uh, animal skin loincloths. So, and, and those animal skin loincloths were probably found on the bodies uh, around the genitals. So they could have actually been buried with them for all I know. I didn't look into that part too much, but I do know that loincloths would have been the first variation of underwear. So loincloths date back thousands and thousands of years. We're talking the caveman times. And actually thongs date back to 42,000 BC. <laughs> And how do they know that? How do these researchers know that? I'll let you know a little bit about that shortly. But when I when I was doing the research on where do um, underwear come from, 
underwear in the sense that what we kind of have now, they actually date back to 5,000 uh, BC in terms of that the fabric that might have been wrapped around the waist or a loincloth. So loincloth or animal skins that would have been worn to protect the genitals. So it could have been because of the climate. It could have been because of, I'm thinking practicality. If I'm sitting on the mud, I would not want my vajage filled with mud or crawling spiders or ants. So I'm just thinking protection shield would be a really good idea of the reason of why did underwear get created. I think uh, people were logical enough to know that they wanted parts of their body protected, um, mostly for for safety reasons. So even when you look at tribal cultures that that people would people would call primitive tribal cultures that still exist, there are still loincloths usually that they have. Their genitals are usually covered, likely for protection, not that people go around asking, although there are tribes that do not have that. So there may be areas of the world where there's uh, where it wasn't considered like a safety issue. So I think it just depends on where they were. Uh, what they what was okay to expose to the in, to the elements. So when we're looking at 5000 BC and we're looking at cavemen wearing loincloths, you know, for some people out there who are really into the Bible, they might have gone to the place of it was Adam and Eve. And do we really know when Adam and Eve happened? Well, not really. But I just want to put that out there for those of you who are really into the Bible that I want to acknowledge that your your history would probably date back to Adam and Eve when they would have been covered with leaves. So in this case, uh, we're looking at more of what has been found, historical artifacts, uh, arche archaeological artifacts that have been found, and we get loincloths. So there are also more modern variations that have come from around 4,400 BC in Egypt. And there were evidence or pictures of uh, like glyphs with people wearing uh, cloth as panties, or they also found, I believe, evidence of this because it's very specific um, that the that part of the history is that there were linen panties and there were also leather goatskin panties for menstruating. So if you were menstruating, you would have had something else that would have uh, probably either soaked up the blood or been like a, pr a protective barrier for the blood. Whether you had linen on top of the goat skin, I don't know. Nobody knows that for sure. However, I thought it was really cool that there were, even back then, uh, I can't remember what they're called now, but there's like a name for these panties that are on the market that are specifically for when you have your period. Uh, Nicks, I think they're called. So very cool that Nyx is like 4,400 years old, dating back to um, ancient Egypt. Those were used with goat skins, but how cool that they had the option. There were also, you know, definitely cultures that, and still have, there still are cultures where women didn't have anything that they were wearing during menstruating. So there were no panties involved. They would have bled into the earth. So they would have been in a hut or in a space where there was like a sacred space and they would have bled either onto, there would have been like hay or mud, or it would have been, um, or there would have been some water that they would have been sitting in. So there would have been a situation that was set up so that it was much more sacred. Um, and then we have this evidence also of um, this underwear, these prototypes of underwear that were found in Egypt. So there's also something called, there's another loincloth that was made from woven materials um, and flax, and it was held up around, like wrapped around a belt. So there were some different variations. Uh, I think that was, an, it, so I'm, I may get the name incorrect, but it's called, a, from what I could tell, a shunti. So shunti spelled S-C-H-E-N-T-I. And if anybody knows how to pronounce that, let me know. I am not sure. I'm just going to pronounce it as the shunti, and which was that loincloth. So we have loincloths. We have all kinds of things. Holy cow. I don't know what's happening to time, but um, obviously I have time traveled and we're almost at our first break. So the question that we're going to address when we come back 
is going to be all about panties versus commando. And like, why would somebody go commando? Why would somebody wear panties? Uh, I, I have a friend who um, never wears underwear. It's just like, she is like, ugh. If that, but I think she grew up not wearing underwear. So to wear underwear now would be very weird. Only she came um, in from a culture that didn't probably wear underwear. So, so there are so many vast different points of view on this. And we're going to talk about some of the health reasons of why even taking a break and going commando for a few days would be great or sleeping commando would be great. So we'll talk about that. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we are talking all about panties. We're talking about from the practical to the sexy. We're discussing some history, some mystery, some where did they come from? What are we using them for? Do we wear them? Should we wear them? Why wouldn't we wear them? What else could we know about them? And so we were just talking about the history of uh, the original underwear and why some of the reasons why we may have uh, started wearing them to begin with. I will give you a little bit more history uh, as well, just a little bit more detail into some of the more modern underwear, when, how kind of underwear evolved. I love this stuff. So I love talking about the history of things. When I kind of dive into the history, I, I tend to get more interested in how things evolved and why we do what we do, um, why humanity has chosen these things. But before that, the great debate question, panty versus commando. I'd love to hear the debate. If you are a commando goer, 99% of the time, just I'd love to hear that. If you're listening live, put hashtag commando in the chat. If you are, uh, if you tend to wear underwear, just go hashtag underwear in the chat. I would love to hear if you are a panties or a commando, if you do both, if you're panties in the day, commando at night, if you're a commando all the time, if you're a panties all the time, I would love to know because I'm just curious. There have been some stats on this that so there was like a group of thousands of people who were interviewed on on uh, whether they go commando or not. And it's quite even. And I just wonder if that is true for the people I know as well. So if you're like watching on YouTube or Facebook Live, if you're watching live, please write a comment. If you're watching after the fact in any of the any of the platforms that allow for comments, I'd love to hear your feedback. Do you love to wear panties? Do you love to go commando? Are you a certain kind of panties lover? Are they satiny? Are they cotton? Are they G-string? What do you love? Are they lacy? Let's hear it. 
So why, you know, why a lot of people wear panties is the same reason why we wore panties, you know, thousands of years ago or undergarments thousands of years ago. And those undergarments helped protect the genitals. And so the genitals are pretty delicate skin. They can, you know, it can tear, rip, get infected quite easily. So you want to maintain the pH of the genitals, especially uh, for uh, vulva, uh, for the vulva. I'm trying to be politically correct here. So if you have a vulva, you'd like to be able to protect that. It does tend to be a little bit more prone to infection than a penis. So, and if you have a combination thereof, which there are intersex people that have a combination thereof, then I'm sure you'd like to protect that as well. Or not, maybe you're commando. So it's not necessary to always wear underwear, for sure. In fact, it's actually recommended by a lot of doctors from a lot of different articles I was reading when I was doing research for this, that doctors have actually recommended that you go commando as much as you can. So whether it's like at nighttime, go commando. Um, if you and by going commando, they mean actually like sleep naked. It's really good for your skin. It's good for your body. It's good for your genitals for them to get air circulation. Uh, you want to be able to get not only air circulation. It just it reduces the risk of UTIs and and also yeast infections and all kinds of things. So and uh, jock itch. So going and sleeping nude is actually a huge contribution to healing your body. Your body can rest easier. It that won't sweat and collect, um, you know, won't collect the sweat to create things like fungus and yeast and all that. So sleep nude. It's fun when you start to get comfortable with that with your own body. It can be a really, really good night's sleep. It's something I recommend that if you are having bad sleeps, just start to sleep naked. It can really help. So uh, going commando, definitely. If you're going commando in clothes that, you know, if if you're somebody like me and you are wet 24-7, like ready for sex every minute of your life, um, then you might not go commando during the whole day because you might leave wet spots around the furniture. It's actually one of the questions that I asked a friend of mine who goes to, um, was actually, she was living at a nudist resort, but she still, she is like going to nudist resorts all the time. And I was like, well, what do you do? Do you just carry a towel around with you? And she's like, basically, yeah, you just carry a towel and you sit on it. And otherwise, yes, you do leave juices around. <laughs> so that's what you can know if you are going commando, if you're wearing things where your genitals would hit furniture, and if you're wearing like short skirts or something and your genitals would touch the furniture, you want to be respectful of that and not leave your juices behind. So either bring something with you you can sit on, or pull your skirt down so you're sitting on it. Um, you know, even back in the day, you know, over 100, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, when there was no underwear, there was usually uh, petticoats, which were kind of like pants that were a bit poofy uh, that women would wear. And there were also sort of short versions, shorter versions of that and longer versions of that, and sometimes nothing, but you would be sitting down on your, um, on your, basically on your skirt and your clothes most of the time. So they would be sort of a substitute for underpants and you'd had many layers. They were like often like five, six layers of clothing. And I could be wrong on the number, but there was definitely more than three. Um, so you would have had like several layers of underclothing and then your top clothing and then clothing that went on top of that. And then you would have other things like aprons as well. So lots of layers than like sometimes long jackets. So you can imagine that you weren't going to soak through any of your, any of your, like all of your clothes at once, unless you accidentally peed yourself or something. And they also had, uh, they had methods and ways to be able to, if you were bleeding, to be able to um, make sure that your blood wasn't going everywhere, right? So the kind of the purpose for underwear, it, it sort of evolved out of that. So, you know, somebody decided that it needed to be different. Plus we got elastic, which was helpful. Elastic was not really around until uh, probably the 19... 20s or 30s, but whoever is a historic, who's into historical costume uh, or his, doing anything with historical clothing, please let me know when was elastic invented. 
probably looking at some historical clothes, I'm thinking that it probably wasn't until after the 30s. So more use of rubber and things like that. But regardless, why do we have underwear the way we have it now is basically there was an evolution and it got smaller. Also, um, clothing changed. And so we weren't having those 12 layers of clothes. So that was part of it as well. But one of the first things um, that I still have a couple minutes to discuss this in this section is G-strings and where did they come from? Because that's a fun conversation. So G-strings, uh, I'm just going to find my names on this so I don't pronounce the name incorrectly. So G-string was actually patented. So G, if you're wearing a G-string, it's been patented. In North America, G-strings are called thongs, but in the rest of most of the world, thong, like in Australia, thongs are like what flip-flops are in the U.S. So to be really clear on what we're talking about, we're going to call them G-strings. And G-strings, I believe, are called G-strings because the fashion designer who patented them, his last name was Gernreich. And so Rudy Gernreich, uh, his name was spelled G-E-R-N-R-E-I-C-H, and I'm probably not doing my German ancestors any justice by pronouncing that. It's probably Gernreich, and apologies if I'm not pronouncing it right. Uh, so he had actually patented that first thong or G-string bikini in 1974, and then it started to evolve, uh, got into some photographs with some fairly famous people. And then those black thongs that were bathing suits got colorful. They also were, you know, more recognized as underwear as well. So they, they started to get really big. Uh, they, they became really popular. They started to become more wide known in terms of bathing suits in the 80s, then they started to evolve beyond that. And in the 2000s, G-string underwear was all the rage until about 2010, and then they started to get unpopular, but they're coming back. So in the 2020s, G-strings are coming back. So the actual first thong though, or G-string, was even though Rudy Gernreich had patented his first G-string, the first, G-string probably came out of the 1939 World's Fair in New York, and it was likely invented out of a necessity because the, the World Fair was going to be sh sh shut down. Well, it wasn't going to be shut down. What was going to be shut down were the, uh, the strippers because they weren't allowed to show their private parts. So what they did instead, the nude dancers, so they weren't stripping, they were nude when they came out. So instead of having them be fully nude, which they weren't allowed to do, the mayor was against that. His name was uh, Fiero La Guardia. So the G-string could have been named after the Guardia or Guardia, or it could have been Gernreich. Who knows? One of these G names definitely got into G-string, is my opinion. and. So because of that, the, the nude dancers got super creative, and in order to comply, they created thongs. And so ever after that, you know, instead of, and you'll probably see it, you'll notice it in Las Vegas, where they can't be fully nude either. They, a lot of the dancers wear thongs. It is a great runaround for not being fully nude. And you can actually wear thongs in most of the U.S., uh, most of Canada as well on beaches. There are certain municipalities have their own rules, though, like one municipality might be okay with it, and the municipality right beside it won't be okay with it. So you really need to know when you're traveling if you're wearing a thong bikini to know if it's uh, going to get you arrested or not. It's always good to know if you're going to get arrested or not. And the very, very original thongs, if we're really going to go back to how far back we can go, they, and I don't know how they found evidence of this, so we're just going to go with, this is what people say, um, is that thongs were actually made for men, and they were made by and for the Indigenous hunter-gatherer group, the San Bushmen, who wore those bottoms 42,000 BCE. 
for both practicality and hunting and for cultural expression. How do we know that for sure? I don't know if there is archaeological evidence that's been left behind with skins or if there are depictions of like cave paintings that show that. There was no there was nothing that uh, indicated that there was proof of this. However, I like the story and I wanted to share it. So I did. So what we are going to talk about when we come back in this third segment is all about panty fetishes, because why not? We're talking about panties. So take your panties on, put your panties on, take your panties off, do whatever you like. We are going to be right back after this commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist, Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you who love a little history and mystery, you can always go back and listen to the first two segments of this show if you're just popping in now, where I talked a bit about the history of what I could find on the history of panties in general undergarments. And then dive to, I think there could probably be, I'm sure there's there's entire essay uh, essays or theses written on the importance of underwear or something, have not dove in that, divin, divin, dove in that far into that. However, I did dive a little bit just to find some history to share with you guys because I thought that would be fun. So now we're going to talk about fetishes because why not? We are on a streak with fetishes. We've had several shows consecutively that have been about fetishes from cigar fetishes, foot fetishes. Uh, we've talked about a lot of fetishes. So I wanted to bring in the fetish on this one as well. And panty fetishes are super, super common. They usually have to do with the look of panties or the scent of panties. So our genitals really give off a lot of pheromones. So you can imagine that your panties are going to hold a lot of scent. You know, even if you probably put them on for an hour, they're going to have your pheromones on them. So if that's something that your lover is into is just you know, smelling your panties, 
your lover is not a weirdo. Most of the time, if your lover is into panties, the chances are your, your partner is male. The chances are your partner is uh, male and you're probably female. The chances are it's a heterosexual thing. However, it has been known that it does go into all uh, all the spectrum of sexuality. It's just more found research-wise. However, again, research is generally biased towards heterosexual couples, so that could be part of it too, that um, it does tend to be men sniffing women's panties, uh, sometimes women with men's and sometimes men with men's and women with women's. However, those are not as common. Will be found or reported, so we're just going to go with that. So the smell and the look of panties. Well, there's also the whole other, there's a lot of other sensory things that go on too. So let's look at all five senses. Um, although the definition of the panty fetish has to do with um, being sexually aroused by the smell or the, the look of panties. It also has to do with the touch. It could have to do with the taste. Um, and so touch, taste, Oh, you can't really hear panties, but maybe you can. Um, maybe, you know, the sound of the materials can turn you on. Or saying the word panties might really turn you on too. That could be the, the other auditory part of it. So, yes, you can use your senses when it comes to panties. What is it that turns you on? A lot of times it is the touch. It can be that they're satiny feeling. So there are generally six main things around panties that are the big turn on. And the, the main ones have to do with texture, look, uh, what those looks signify. So we've got one of the top ones is the satin panty fetish. So this one's really common, liking the sensuality of satiny fabrics, how they feel, um, the sheen, the look, the, mostly it has to do with the sensations of when the panties are touched and how they are aesthetically pleasing because they're nice and shiny. So that's our satin panty fetish, which is really common. And this is why you're going to find that lots of lingerie stores sell satiny things because it's appealing it's shimmery it kind of lights us up like as if we're magpies going for the next shiny thing uh, and so materials that will do that also can reflect a lot of light and it can be a little bit more tantalizing and alive looking so that can also be part of it so the texture with satin too there's a luxurious feeling to it because it's kind of silky in a way so there can be an element of luxury, can be really great for different play where somebody is like the rich dom to the sub who is, you know, uh, the struggling sub or something like that. So you can play with materials that match some of the scenarios. Then we have cotton, the cotton panty fetish, which is actually super, super common. I have heard this one time and again for many, many men um, who just love cotton panties. Uh, when I first started my show, I have a friend, shout out to him, he knows who I'm talking about, he sends, he uh, has sent me many topics in the past and has actually been a guest, I think we still have a show from him, his name is Jonathan, I'm just giving his first name, but back in the day when I first started my show, uh, or a few years in, he had, he had sent me information on websites where you can buy and sell panties, and a lot of the panties on those websites, and the buying and selling of panties is not generally new panties. These are worn. Um, sometimes the longer they're worn, the more valuable they are. So worn used panties, and uh, they generally are have not been washed. So they get shipped out as such. And uh, so yes, he had actually sent me a website with that. And on that, there were several, several categories around uh, cotton panties. But depending on the the fetish and the kind of panty, it is, um, you can get things geared exactly to your desires. So it's kind of interesting and it's available. And it's not the same for a guy to necessarily go out and buy a whole bunch of brand new panties, say from um, Walmart or something. Here's your six pair of cotton panties. It's, uh, there is something about having it gifted to you or having to buy it and having it be worn by somebody, you've got some of the um, their scent or knowing that it was theirs, that can add a lot to the whole fetish of it. 
rather than just having brand new ones. So it's uh, super common and not everybody is a psychopath who collects panties because there was a guy who who was a psychopath murderer who lived, uh, li well, didn't live full time, but had a cottage in a town next to ours. And about 10 or 12 years ago, he was the colonel. And uh, if anybody remembers that story in Canada or the US, the colonel who had murdered several, raped and murdered several women, he was also had a panty fetish. But that does, and I think that left a really bad thought in a lot of people's minds is that if you collect panties you must be a psychopath because that they kept on connecting those two things in the story um but it it was his panty fetish did not lead him to rape women his desire to rape and kill women was separate from the panty fetish so let's um we're just going to move on from that i just wanted to put that out there that i do know and i am aware that this does come up for a lot of people and they're like wow freaked out by the thought that they're partner might be into that and what does that mean all right moving back to the cotton panty fetish so the cotton panties can be just very um kind of like a young feeling like a teenager of you know you've got your white cotton panties it's very clean and pure looking it can be really uh, kind of like a feeling of virginity almost so whether you have them in g strings which are a little bit more risque or you have the regular in a boy short cotton panties those are actually a really um a really classic fetish so having having sometimes even the full coverage or being very modest and kind of old-fashioned can be kind of sexy as well the 1950s underpants look can be really uh sexy for a lot of men as well uh, or panties in general anybody with a panty fetish so generally those panties are preferred to be white but not always sometimes there's like a preference for a little bow at the front and in the research on underpants the little bow has a very cool kind of history that historically underpants would have been tied up because there was no elastic so there would have been a ribbon inside the petticoat that would have been tied together and that little ribbon would have probably tied up at the front so so why you often will find little ribbons at the front of panties apparently so just I guess it's like a nod to the past so we've got these um pure white very uh pristine looking underwear that can be easily um you know if you bleed on them they're going to stain if you wear them if you've you know had sex in them the wetness will be really obvious there's things that white panties can do for someone and stimulate certain senses that say darker panties won't do so if if your lover is into panty fetishes check out which one it is is it the you know the g-string is it the sat satin is it the cotton we are going to talk more about these because there are more of these so that classic look can really help with the whole um the modest woman kind of the virginal type woman kind of uh feeling and that's those are a lot of great scenarios that can be played out with the white panty that's um the innocence and all those things that the white panty might represent and then we got the g-string fetish um because it's hardly there but you can just it usually just covers the mons pubis so the the pubic triangle at the front and if you if you are shaving all your pubic hair then it could it can really just be a substitute for for just a little bit of uh, hiding the genitals just barely right it can leave your buttocks in full view it can basically it, it barely covers your or at least for me it barely songs barely cover my labia so you know if you're if that's cool if you like that feeling of having something going up your butt songs or g-strings going up your butt cool wear your you know wear your your thumbs and enjoy them i find them highly uncomfortable just saying i can wear them for like an hour for just pure uh, naughty play but for an entire day that's a hard one the g-string also has a bit of a history or like a a bias about it that people will connect it to 
the naughty girl, you know, oh, she's wearing a song that makes her a slut or something that it's weird, but there is a bias about that. And so wearing those songs can also be great for slutty play and doing things that are more geared towards those scenarios. So, okie doke. Uh, now we're going to move on. Do I, oh, we're going to move on to the next parts of the panty fetish when we come back from this commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time? for a totally different sexual evolution. Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Today we are talking all about panties, a little bit of history, a little bit of kink, a little bit of fun. There is a lot of information out there on panties, so I could probably do several episodes. And surprisingly, after over 400 episodes, I have not actually done one specifically on panties yet. I don't know how that happened. So um, we are talking about the kink of panties right now. So if this part's not your thing, that's cool. Go back uh, to the original beginning. Um, as with all kinks, as I've talked about before, it's always good to have, have uh, permission. So don't just go around stealing women's underwear. Like, you know, even though you might want to get reprimanded and that's part of the play, consensual non-consent always. So I just want to put that out there because... Um, I've ha I had people steal my underwear and I thought it was really annoying because they were usually like my favorite underwear. And um, I just prefer that my underwear is not stolen. So you sometimes will find that people who are into stealing underwear will do all kinds of things like take clothes off of clotheslines. I know we still have those in Canada, um, but they'll also do things like go to uh, laundromats and just take things out of baskets. Like it, it can get to a point where theft is involved. That's the only time where panty fetish can get kind of dangerous is where there's theft involved or if you're choking somebody with panties, those can be dangerous. But we're, we're keeping it pretty mild today on the conversation of panty kinks. So we talked about satin panties and cotton panties and the different textures, song panties and why people might like them for some slut play. And we also are going to talk about panty sniffing and what is panty sniffing and why would you do that? Well, like I was saying earlier, the, you know, your genitals have a lot of pheromones and hormones and all kinds of great things that come out of there. So you're going to, you know, your genitals will saturate your clothing with that, all your pheromones. So your panties, if they are the first in line to your clothes, then they're going to get the pheromones. Your clothes will get them as well uh, in different ways. So one of the things with panty sniffing is sometimes you might not even see that your partner's into that because you have, might have gone off to the bathroom and your partner grabs your par panties and sniffs them. Um, and that's sometimes when your panties disappear and you never see them again. However, that's not always the case, right? So with panty sniffing, it can also be that the person's wearing them and the panties get sniffed. The panties are off and they get sniffed. The panties have just been washed and they're sniffed. Sometimes it's that feeling of, oh, they're so fresh, but usually it's got the pheromones on it that makes it a little bit more um, hot and kinky. And, and as I was saying before, there are, you know, websites where you can pick your panties, pick the girl who wears them and like, you know, whether she's wearing them for, you know, 
three weeks or a day or an hour or whatever, you can have uh, different levels of pay for that sort of thing. So if you are into them, you probably already know about those websites. If you're not into them, I was just telling you that to shock you. So panty sniffing is pretty common. Um, it's just one of those things where all those pheromones are in there. So it's a super primal kink. And why it's primal is because it's very animalistic. So when you think about what animals do, they, like cats and dogs sniff each other's butts directly. And so they're getting the pheromones, right? They sniff human butts too. They're in for the hormones all the time. So it's a very primal, um, a very primal fetish. So there is also the used panty fetish as well. And the used panty fetish, uh, which is kind of part of this, the smelling fetish as well, but sometimes it's just having them. Sometimes it's just having used panties and not smelling them and collecting them and just going collecting them from a whole bunch of different people. So you can have, you know, Jennifer's underwear and Melanie's underwear and, um, you know, Valerie's underwear and you've got your collection of underwear and it just makes you happy. Um, might remind you of all the lovers you've had. Maybe you want a pair of underwear from every lover you've had, or maybe you want a pair of underwear from every lover you'd like to have. And I think some of the the more fun for a lot of guys, especially who are into the panty fetish, is to be able to be given panties. Like it's a really nice gift. Um, and so if your lover is into panties and they're into used panties, one of the nicest things you can give them is a pair of your used panties so they can take with them, have them, whether they're going to wear them themselves, which is part of another part of the fetish, the panty wearing fetish, whether they're wearing them or they're using the used panties to masturbate with, sometimes masturbate on, sometimes use it as um, to actually uh, wrap it around the penis and masturbate. There can be, do you like the hand action for those of you who are watching on video? I did a little hand action as if I was holding the penis of an elephant. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to be really clear that was not the size of my husband's um, genitals. No, that's like an elephant. So no, um, but there's yeah, so the panty sniffing and all that fun. So use panties, whether it's the look of them being used and whether the person's had their period in them or whether they just have, um, you know, uterine shedding lining in there or whether they've wet them out from, you know, having sex. And then I know that like when you, whenever you have, well, for me anyway, this is the case of it is if, um, if, if there's cum inside, it will often drop out and, you know, land on the panties. So that could be the bonus too, that the guy likes to smell his own cum in your panties. There's a bunch of different variations on that. I was like, my brain is exploding with ideas here and I'm trying to keep to my time and keep on in line. So the panty wearing fetish can be one of those ones where you're just wearing the panties in, by yourself it's kind of private. It's kind of a thing that you're, you know, some people are ashamed of it. So they just do it on their own. Sometimes they want to do it um, for a certain play where there can be role, um, role flipping play where maybe uh, you're doing gender switches or there might be just the feeling of having the textures of like the satin against the testicles or there might be a feeling of just having all of whatever she's got in her panties the pheromones and all the all the juices going on to your genitals it could be that kind of fun too so lots of options on that front and so whether you're wearing them in the bedroom, whether you're wearing them by yourself, whether you're wearing them to masturbate in, or whether you're just wearing them to work in the office. And maybe your dom has told you, you have to wear her panties um, to work every day to the office where you know you're wearing a suit, but underneath you're wearing panties. That could be happening too. Perhaps you're wearing her thong, perhaps you're wearing her granny panties, whatever it is. I hope you're having fun and that everything is consensual and that everybody has agreed to this. And get inventive. There isn't a lot of danger with, with that panty fetish. I'm sure you can come up with some ideas and have even more fun than I've mentioned. And have fun. Thank you for listening to The week. Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich.
The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.